Hey, how's your work going? Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm making some good progress here. I'm just gonna finish this line here and here. Almost done. Many people seem to think that customizing material UI components is hard. But let me tell you, it's not. Well, yeah, maybe there are a few cases which are a bit tricky, especially if you're a beginner. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually not that bad. And I'm not just talking about, you know, easy things like changing the color of a button or something like that. I'm talking about full-on customization. That means changing how the components look and feel to a really granular level. And if you're struggling with this, let me reassure you, you're not alone. I was in the same boat when I started out. And when you go on Stack Overflow, you'll find tons of questions from beginners about this topic. So in this video, I'm gonna explain to you everything that you need to know about custom customizing material UI and by the end of it you'll know all the different techniques and when to use them. So make sure to watch till the end because you're gonna walk out as a pro, as an expert customizing your components and I'm sure you're gonna have more fun doing so. Alright, enough of me talking, let's get to it. First, let's start with the easiest way. And this one might be so obvious that many people overlook it. I'm talking about the API for each component. You can change how components look and feel with predefined props. Let's take the button component for example. If you've ever used Material UI for a bit, you'll know that you can set the variant to change the button's appearance. Maybe you also know that you can change its size too. But if you want to remove the ripple effect when pressing the button, how would you do it? Using some complex CSS overrides? Not needed. You can simply disable it by setting disable ripple. Ok, what about the shadow? If you want to remove it, would you override the box shadow CSS? Well, I guess you could do that. Or you simply set disable elevation. Or let's take the paper component for example. You can easily change the shadow by setting and changing the elevation prop instead of overwriting box shadow with CSS. Ok, maybe you knew that already. But did you also know that you can change the variation to outlined? Or set square to true for sharp edges? Again, no need for custom CSS styling. So as you can see, for some common changes, it's really that easy. So the takeaway here is, before you dive deep into CSS, just take a quick look at the component props first. Chances are, you might find what you're looking for in there. Ok, let's say we want to customize this button a little bit more. For that, we have a couple of options. We could use the SX prop, which is available on every material UI component. It's kinda like the normal style prop on HTML elements, but under the hood it gets converted into CSS classes and comes with some additional features. First, let's change the button color like this. You can put any valid value in here, but if you want to use material colors, MUI has built-in colors that you can import and use like this. Now let's get rid of the uppercase, change the font size and change the border radius. If we check the result, it looks great until you hover over it. Let's fix that as well. And this is something that you can't do in the normal style prop. Here you can add hover styling and any other states, like this. Let's check the result. Cool, this looks good. Now, you might be not the biggest fan of styling components like this. If you feel like the styles are making your files hard to read, you can separate the styling by using the styled function. You can pass it an HTML element or material UI component, like in this example, button, and then style it like this. This will create a styled component. And alternatively, if you want to use the normal CSS markup, you can use the CSS function from Emotion instead. Although you might need to add some extra rules to remove linting errors. It's not that ideal actually. So in this case, I would rather recommend to use normal CSS files. You can style components like that easily as well. But if you want to collocate your CSS and have it scoped for each page or component, you also have the option to use CSS modules. And the last option is to use a theme, which is one of Material UI's strengths, since all of its components can access it. You just have to wrap your application with a theme provider and create a theme object. Here you can define all kinds of styling rules that will override the default. In our example, let's change the default styling for the paper and button components. Let's start with paper. First, we need to go into the component, which is called MUI paper, then style overrides and then root. This is how we can override the default styling for all paper components. Now we can change the padding and border radius and that's gonna be the default everywhere. Now let's continue with the button component. Before we do the same thing here, let's set some default props. 
In our example, we don't want the ripple effect in Shadow. Instead of giving the button these two props each time we use it, we can just set it here once, in the theme, and it's gonna be applied everywhere. Alright, now let's get to the style overrides. These are the same changes from the previous steps. And now as you can see, our paper and button components are customized and look like this by default. However, setting the color of the button like this might not be ideal. When creating a website, you usually have a design system that includes some colors that you consistently use throughout the website. If we set the color of each single component like this, and later decide to use a different color for all components, we would have to change it in every single place. That's not ideal. But Material UI has a built-in solution for this. Here, I'll show you. Let's remove our color overrides and take a look at the button again. Actually, let's also change the variant to contained, so we can see the color better. As you can see, it's blue by default, and the text is white, even though we didn't define any colors. That's because it's using a default color palette. We can access it in all components with a color prop. If we set it to primary, it doesn't change, because that's the default already. But if we set it to secondary, it turns purple, which is the default secondary color. Let's go into our theme and change these. We can do that by defining a palette object, which contains the primary color palette. Here, we can simply set a material color like this. It will automatically choose the main color, a light and a dark variant, and the text contrast color. See, it's orange now. Let's set the secondary color to yellow. If we change the button color to secondary, it uses yellow now. As you can see, the text is black, which is set automatically to have the best contrast. If you want more fine-grained control, you can go in here and put in an object, in which you define the exact main color and a dark variant for hover. See, it's now using the exact colors. If you want, you can also change the contrast color for the text as well. And the great thing is, all components will use this color palette by default. And you can adjust it whenever you want in one single place. And here's one more tip. If you want to use the palette colors outside the color props of your components, like let's say inside the SX prop to for example define a border, how do you access it? You can write primary or secondary and then the property you want to use, like main for example. And that's all. See, it works. You could also access dark or contrast text as well. It's really easy and convenient. And if two color palettes are not enough, you can extend them to as many as you need. There's a lot more that you can do with themes, and this deserves a whole video on its own. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to cover this as well. And while you're at it, give the video a like if you find this helpful, it helps me out a lot. And also subscribe if you don't want to miss out on more material UI content. All right. Back to the video. Now that you know all the different methods to style and customize components, you might be confused which one to use. Now to be honest, there is no correct way, but here's my recommendation. If you already have a design for your website, start with a theme and add some style overrides or default props that you want all instances of these components to have, like we did with the paper and button example. Then you can use these components, which already by default are styled, through the theme. And if you have cases in which you need some additional changes, you can use the SX prop or normal CSS to do that. However, if the customization through the theme is not enough for you, or you just don't like the syntax, you can instead create your own button component that is based on the material UI button and add your own styling through the SX prop, styled function or normal CSS. You can even add additional functionality to it if you want to make it truly custom. Now before I wrap up this video, I want to address one common issue that often arises. We looked at simple components up until now, but what if you want to customize a more complex component and change different parts of it? Let's take a look at the slider for example. Components like these consist of a main component with its class, like in this case MUI slider, and smaller parts that have their own classes that you can target. You can check the documentation for each component or use the inspector in the browser and find out what they are called. Here we have the thumb, track and rail, and we can target each one of them to change their styling, like this. And then there are also states in which components can be in, like for example active, focus visible and so on. They correspond to CSS pseudo classes for the most part. For example, if we click and hold the slider thumb, you can see the MUI active and MUI focus visible classes being added. And when we release, MUI active gets removed, but MUI focus visible still remains. So in this case, we could target them like this and change the styling of the thumb in these two states. See, it works. 
it's recommended to be specific and not just target the states directly like this, but instead increase the specificity by adding the component class as well. That way you will avoid CSS bleeding out into other components and creating unwanted side effects. Alright, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure to give it a like, it helps me out a lot. Also, subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. I'm gonna make more videos about MUI for sure. I already have one uh, where I cover the basics, so make sure to give it a watch as well if you haven't yet. And yeah, that's all. See you in the next one.